Hello, hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday, and welcome to this live English lesson. You know, when I was young, I think I was in the second or third grade when I first practiced swearing with my friends. I'll never forget the first time it was recess at school. Uh, we all gathered around in the playground, and we practiced swearing together for the first time. We actually uh, started saying all of these words that we weren't allowed to say around our parents or around our teachers, and it was great fun. It was that first moment of kind of real rebellion against adults. And then a few years later, after that, I got my first rap CD. I traded one of my friends a CD that I no longer wanted for an Eminem CD. It was in the 90s. I think it was Eminem's second album called the Marshall Mathers LP. And I listened to it, and I heard swearing and language taken to a whole new level. And I think the the world in general, when Eminem came to uh, came to be very popular, saw language and some horrible things being said that had never been said before. And rap music in general has kind of had this reputation in some ways. And why am I telling you all of this? Because in today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to an excerpt of a podcast episode that I recorded with another online English teacher named Jason R. Levine, aka Fluency MC online. And one thing that Jason does is he uses rap music, his passion for rap music and his passion for teaching, he combines those two things in order to motivate students to practice learning English outside of the classroom. Now, the excerpt of the conversation that I'm going to play for you in it, you'll hear me asking Jason about the reputation that rap music has. So you'll hear me asking him about rap music in the year 2018 and why rap music still has a reputation for some pretty horrible lyrical content. Uh, so we're going to listen to that. We're going to listen to Jason's answer, and we're going to learn some new vocabulary along the way. It should be great. Let me say to hello to Babiker, Bruna, Huang, Vivian, AAF, Junior, Wacharapun, Ruxana, Carol. Hello to all of you. So let's get ready. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some English listening practice, and I'm going to, like I said, Play you an excerpt from the conversation. We're going to listen to two today. This is from the Jacob Teacher Podcast, episode number 16. In this first excerpt, you're going to hear me ask Jason a question. I want you to listen very carefully and to fill in the blanks. Okay, get ready. It's coming fast. I'll probably play it two times through. Here we go. It's actually one of the things I wanted to ask you about because I'm a big rap fan myself, and it seems you are too. And, um, you know, rap is notorious for having some pretty strong lyrical content. And I'm curious mm -hmm. to know your thoughts about that, why you think that is. And, you, you know, especially nowadays too, in 2018, I was actually just listening to a, um, a critique of the song Rockstar by uh, Post Malone. Do you know that song? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was listening to this guy critique it, and one thing that he was saying was, you know, the world as a whole in general seems to be adopting more progressive views, yet rap music still seems to kind of lag behind in that regard. <laughs> I was wondering, what do you think about that? Why do you think that is? All right. How did you guys do there? Should we listen to it one more time? Let me check on the chat room here and see what you guys have to say. It will probably take a second. Also, so type in the vocabulary that you hear. Let me know if you can hear it too, because I can actually hear it on my end, so I don't know if you can hear it. But last week it worked okay. I'm doing the same thing this week. Let me know if you're able to hear it and type in the words into the chat room. I'm going to play it for you one more time. Here we go. It's actually one of the things I wanted to ask you about, because I'm a big rap fan myself, and it seems you are too. And, um, 
you know, rap is notorious for having some pretty strong lyrical content. And I'm curious to know your thoughts about that, why you think that is. And, you know, especially nowadays, too, in 2018, I was actually just listening to a um, a critique of the song Rockstar by uh, Post Malone. Do you know that song? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was listening to this guy critique it. And one thing that he was saying was, you know, the world as a whole in general seems to be adopting more progressive views yet rap music still seems to kind of lag behind in that regard. <laughs> I was wondering, what do you think about that? Why do you think that is? Okay. Any ideas? Let's see. Okay, good. We have number one, Notorious. Number two, Adopting. Carol says, Lying Behind. Bashir, notorious, adopting, latch behind. Close. It seems like we're having some problems with the last one. It's not latch behind. It's not lying behind. Lack behind. Not quite. It's close. Let's take a look. Lab behind. (laughs) Very close, you guys. I'm impressed that you got those ones. Notorious, right. Rap is notorious for having some pretty strong lyrical content. We're going to talk about that word in a moment. You guys got the second one right, adopting, adopting more progressive views. And the last one that was giving people some trouble, lag behind. Rap music still seems to kind of lag behind in that regard. Now let's talk about this word, notorious. I say rap is notorious for having some pretty strong lyrical content. Notorious basically means, it's an adjective that basically means well known for something bad. If someone or something is notorious, they're famous, they're well known, but usually for a very bad reason. Okay, let's look at some examples here. So before we do, this is, well, this is a great example. This is a rapper, one of my favorite rappers, the Notorious B.I.G. He passed away a long time ago. He was shot, but... His name, the Notorious B.I.G., you can tell that he's kind of going for that image. He wants to be known as someone bad, someone well-known for something bad. And that was kind of his rap persona. We'll talk about that word a little bit later, persona. But, for example, China is notorious for its pollution. China, the the pollution in China is well-known around the world. China is notorious for its pollution. Pollution. That's a picture of Beijing. Joseph Stalin is notorious. Joseph Stalin, the man responsible for killing many people during the 20th century in Russia, is notorious. He's well known for a bad reason. So tell me about something or someone that is notorious. Someone you know, something you know. What is, try to use notorious in a sentence here. And I'll try to correct your answers. There you go, Vivian. Lag behind, exactly. We'll talk about lag behind in a minute here, but let's start with Notorious, you guys. And hello, Patricia from France. Carol says, help, Jacob. The last one is difficult. Lag behind. Yeah, Carol, we'll we'll talk about that in a minute, but it is difficult. Lag, L-A-G, lag behind. Now, what's nice about these conversations, too, about listening to these conversations, you probably have noticed that the English that I use in conversation, the English that you'll hear Jason use in conversation in a moment, we're going to listen to another section of the of the conversation, is very different from the English that you'll hear used maybe in, in a formal English lesson like this. It's much faster. You, I use different phrasal verbs that I perhaps wouldn't use with you guys, or at least wouldn't use without explaining. So what's nice is you get to see how different a real natural conversation is compared to English that you might see online in an English lesson or in a textbook. And that's why I wanted to play these excerpts for you and why I wanted to start my podcast to begin with. And by the way, if you're just joining now, you can download the full episode that Jason and I recorded together in the description of this video. Just follow the link. At the end of the episode here, we're speaking about rap. Jason actually 
freestyle raps for us. Fluency MC spits out a freestyle rap. Spit out is rap slang. It just means rap, basically. Okay, Grace says, You'll become notorious when hungry while patiently waiting. The line at the McDonald's. Interesting. So you're talking about hunger being notorious. Now, we wouldn't really use it in that way. I mean, if you did something horrible, let's say, if, if you got really angry and crashed into someone's car and hurt a bunch of people because you were angry because McDonald's was taking too long and you were sitting in the drive-thru for way too long, then perhaps you could become notorious. Maybe there would be a big news story about you and you'd become notorious because you were that person that did something horrible in the McDonald's drive-thru. But we wouldn't really talk about hunger in that way. Hitler is notorious for leading people and is responsible for killing innocent Jewish people. Yes, Hitler is definitely someone who is notorious. I was actually going to use him instead of Stalin. I was deciding between the two notorious people. Hurting people emotionally and physical is notorious. Interesting. We wouldn't really describe it as notorious. It sounds a little strange to me to describe hurting people emotionally and physical is notorious. I know exactly what you're trying to say, and I know why you want to use it that way, but we wouldn't really use notorious there. What we could say, perhaps, is hurting people emotionally. It is well known that hurting people emotionally and physically is something you should never do. Maybe you could say something like that. Notorious is a little awkward there. We all do notorious things in our lives. I think you're just trying to say horrible things in our lives sometimes. Bill Cosby is notorious for sexual assault allegations and charges. Yes, absolutely. That's something notorious. And hello, Supapinya, Norios. Jaleem, hello to you too. Great, well, let's keep going here, you guys. So I think you understand notorious, well known for something bad. Now let's talk about this last part of the question uh, that I asked Jason. The world as a whole, in general, seems to be adopting more progressive views, yet rap music still seems to kind of lag behind in that regard. So what am I talking about here? Well, let's start with this word, adopt. Tell me in the comment section, what does adopt mean? I'm sure that you've heard the verb before, to adopt. What do you think the verb adopt means? Let me know. I'm going to move on while you're typing to talk about progressive views. Now, progressive is kind of a political term. So often you have people who are politically progressive against people who are politically conservative. Now, progressive people tend to want change. They want to bring social change. They have modern ideas. Conservatives more want everything to stay the same. Progressive was perhaps a weird word for me to use here, maybe not the best, but we'll talk about what I'm trying to say in general at the end. Lag behind, what does lag behind mean? Basically, it just means behind. So imagine you're running a race and someone is lagging behind you. That person is just slowly following behind you. So I'm talking about the world. I'm talking about adopting progressive views, and I'm talking about rap music seeming to lag behind. Let's see what you guys have to say about the word adopt. Yeah, okay, good. Adopt is to undertake something, to take an idea from something. Cool, I, I would say the most common way we use adopt, the most common way we use adopt is to talk about adopting children, right? Parents can put their kids up for adoption if they feel they can't raise them. So children without parents can be adopted by other parents who are looking to raise children. Okay, so we probably use the word adopt most commonly in that situation. But you can also adopt beliefs. You can adopt viewpoints. Okay, you can adopt ideas and practices. So good, it seems like Ruxana, yes, choose to take up, to take something up, exactly. 
So let's talk about this paragraph again as a whole. And you guys, while you're listening to all of this, I don't want you to get too put off by all of these words. I really want you to try to focus on what I'm essentially trying to communicate. So don't worry about the exact precise meaning of every word, okay? Just try to get in your mind what I'm trying to communicate, what I'm trying to get out of my mind. Okay, so let's talk about this paragraph again. I'm talking about the world in general adopting more progressive views. What I really meant was the world is slowly starting to treat each other more equally, uh, starting to be more tolerant. That's what I meant by progressive. Um, I said the world is slowly starting to do that, slower and slower. Yet rap music, because of the strong lyrical content and some of the lyrics that are in rap songs, rap music kind of lags behind. Okay, so the world is going up and up and up and slowly treating each other better. Rap music is still behind in terms of lyrical content, in terms of the message that they're sending out in songs. That's what I was asking Jason. I was asking his opinion about that. Why do you think that is? My cat is asking a question, maybe. I don't know, I don't speak cat, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If this is all a little bit confusing to you, I know it's difficult because we're analyzing real conversations here, but if you have any questions about certain words, if you still don't understand something, type it into the question box, or the chat room rather, and I'll do my best to explain it to you. Now, listening test number two. Let's look at what Jason says in response to my question. So this is Jason, AKA Fluency MC. Like last time, I'll play everything through twice. And you guys can let me know what you think. Fill in the blanks. Here we go. I hear what you're saying. I mean, I think, I think part of it is, you know, sort of to get attention and to, uh, to create controversy and, you know, kind of, get under people's skin the way like punk rock has been also. And I think that, that, that's a, that's a good thing in a way, but, but, I, but, you know, it's interesting, you know, a lot of, a lot of the time uh, when you talk to people or you hear interviews with people that are writing kind of what I, what I would say, you know, junk <laughs> lyrics like that and kind of, you know, homophobic or like, you know, uh, just narrow minded. They're actually, those people are not like that. Like they're, it's almost like they're taking on this persona All right, so type your answers into the chat room if you were able to hear what the blank, what goes in the blank sections. And we're going to play it one more time. Here we go. I hear what you're saying. I mean, I think, I think part of it is, you know, sort of to get attention and to, uh, to create controversy and, you know, kind of get under people's skin the way like punk rock has been also. And I think that, that, that's a, that's a good thing in a way, but, but I, but you know, it's interesting, you know, a lot of, a lot of the time uh, when you talk to people or you hear interviews with people that are writing kind of what I, what I would say, you know, junk <laughs> lyrics like that and kind of, you know, homophobic or like, you know, uh, just narrow minded. They're actually, those people are not like that. Like they're, it's almost like they're taking on this persona All right, how did you guys do? What did you think of Jason's response? Let's see, let's check the chat room here. Number one, get under people's skin. Good. Homophobic, someone heard too. Good. Number two, homophobic. Good, yep. The last one was a little hard too, wasn't it? I'll give you a hint though. I mentioned, I actually used this word earlier in the live lesson. Let's take a look. Get under people's skin. To create controversy and, you know, kind of get under people's skin. Number two, many of you got this one right, homophobic. Number three, taking on this persona. So we're going to talk about what Jason is saying here. Again, we're going to analyze these words 
and phrases and idioms. But let's start with this first idiom. I think part of it is, you know, sort of to get attention and to, to create controversy and, you know, kind of get under people's skin. Now, two things I want to say about this. We're going to one is to talk about what get under people's skin means, but I want you to notice too how many fillers there are here. Now, all of us as English speakers, and I'm sure you do in your native tongue too, we use fillers when we speak. What I mean by a filler is something that you say while you're thinking of what you actually want to say. So if you listen to Jason speak, if you listened to me speak before, you'll notice that we use a lot of fillers in conversation. Too many fillers is probably not a good thing. I always try to not use many fillers, but it's inevitable. It happens. I think part of it is, you know, that's a very common filler that we use. You know. Part of it is, you know, sort of to get attention and to, to create controversy and, you know, kind of get under people's skin. So a lot of the time when you're listening to a conversation, you'll hear lots of fillers and it can be kind of distracting, maybe. Don't let it distract you. Let's look at what we're trying to say here. So part of the reason is to get attention, to create controversy, and get under people's skin. Now, many people often ask me, should I learn idioms? Which idioms should I learn? Which phrasal verbs should I learn? Learn idioms that we actually use in real conversation. And you can see that Jason is using this idiom with me. It's a good one to know. It's one that comes up often. To get under someone's skin means to make someone really angry or annoyed. It's very simple. If you get under someone's skin or if something gets under your skin, it makes you angry, you make that person angry, etc. Let's look at some examples. Her speech really got under my skin. Imagine going to a conference at work, let's say, and your boss gives a speech and you really don't like her speech. Something about it bothers you. Maybe she says something kind of rude or arrogant. You could say her speech really got under my skin. Made me angry. I said it just to get under his skin. So imagine two kids in a playground who don't like each other. One kid says something really, really mean to the other kid. You could say, I said it just to get under his skin. I said it just to make him angry, just to annoy him. Tell me about a time when someone or something got under your skin. Let me know in the comment section. Ruxana says, persona, good. Junior is struggling with the last phrase. That's okay, we'll look at the last phrase. You got the first ones right. Get under people's skin. Homophobic, undertaken. Ruxana, persona, yeah, the persona is definitely in the last part. We'll talk about that. Get on people's skin. Get under people's skin, Grace, under. And Grace says the accent is too fast. Yeah, it's fast. We talk quite quite fast in the conversation. It's a full speed conversation for sure. Hello, Nye. Shazia says, I'm late. That's okay. You can watch the replay. Good. Bora says, take on a persona. Yeah, you guys are right. What does it mean to take on a persona? We'll talk about that soon. But let me know when the last time something or someone got under your skin. When was that? Vivian says, people who always think they are right and are unwilling to listen to others and be open to their perception. These, you would say, these kinds of people always get under my skin. Really impressive sentence, Vivian. Nicely said. And yeah, those kinds of people would understandably get under your skin. Economic lectures get under my skin, says Kubra. Well, I hope you're not an economics major then, or else you'll have to take a lot of economics lectures. 
Maybe messages got under someone's skin, says Nie. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Shazia says homophobic, yes. That's what that was the word before. Carol says, when people ask things trying to locate you in a specific income or something related to a classification in society. Yeah, how would I have rephrased that? Carol, you could say, when people try to place you into a category based on your income, your age, your status, whatever, that gets under your skin. Very nicely said. The TV news gets under my skin. Yeah, well... TV news depresses me too. It's always, um, it, it can definitely get under your skin. It's also just depressing to watch and to see all of the horrible things happening all the time. Vivian says, when my parents compare me to my cousin in terms of academic transcripts, it always get under my skin. Vivian, you could say, when my parents compare me to my cousin's in terms of academic, you could say in terms of grades. You could also say when my parents compare my grades to my cousin's grades, it gets under my skin. Donald Trump and his speeches sometimes get under my skin, says Junior. I think they get under many people's skin. Is it skins? Skins? <laughs> it's weird doing that plural. But yeah, I think they bother a lot of people. Falsehood really gets under my skin, Jaleem. Good. When mom forced me to clean my bedroom, she gets under my skin. When mom forces me to clean my bedroom, she gets under my skin. This afternoon, a man came to my office who was bragging about himself. He got under my skin, says Bashir. Very nicely said, Bashir. Perfect. Good. So I think you guys understand this. Let's move on to the last part of the paragraph here. So I want you to think about this. And again, I don't want you to worry too much about the specific words here. I'm going to explain the word homophobic. I'm going to explain what taking on this persona means. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I want you to read this paragraph. And I want you to try to summarize for me, in essence, what is Jason trying, what point is Jason trying to make here? What is he trying to say? Remember, before... I was asking Jason about why rap music, why the lyrics in rap songs are so horrible sometimes. And he, of course, I should say too, these are just excerpts from our conversation. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode and hear Jason's full answer, you can download it below. But what is Jason saying here? What is his response? This is one thing that he's saying in response to my question. You hear interviews with people that are writing kind of what I would say, you know, junk lyrics like that and kind of, you know, homophobic or like, you know, just narrow minded. So he's talking about hearing interviews with people who write these kinds of lyrics, these rap stars who are writing bad lyrics. They're actually those people are not like that. Like it's almost like they're taking on this persona. So. The word homophobic, we have two words here, basically, homo and phobic. Now, phobic is a really, really, phobia is a really good word to know in English. Phobia basically means fear. Phobia, whenever you see the word phobia in English, it means fear. Um, arachnophobia, for example, is a fear of spiders. Claustrophobia is a fear of being in close spaces. What else do we have? Arachnophobia, claustrophobia, and gorophobia, I think, is another one. There's tons of phobias in English. Um, so whenever you see a word with phobia on the end, it means a fear of that thing. Now, homo, the, this comes from the word homosexual. So what he's talking about here when he says homophobic is essentially a fear of gay people. But we don't actually mean someone's afraid of gay people when we say the word homophobic. Usually what we're saying is that they don't like gay people. So if someone writes something that is homophobic, it means that person writes something that is very mean or bad towards gay people in some way. Okay, so don't think of it as a fear. Maybe some people would argue it is, but it's we use it more to describe just hatred towards gay people. 
So lyrics that are homophobic or narrow-minded. They're actually not like that. Those people are, it's almost like they're taking on a persona, this persona. Now a persona is something that an artist or a performer assumes on stage. It's almost like another personality that that artist performs with. So at the beginning of this live lesson, I told you a story about the first time I listened to an Eminem CD. Eminem is someone who is, it's a perfect example of someone who takes on a persona. It's almost like he becomes this other person in his rap music on stage. And he actually has another name for this person too, this persona. Slim Shady is his persona. So many rap stars, many actors, they have a certain persona when they're in front of the camera or when they're behind the microphone, when they're being interviewed, they have a persona. In their real life, they're like a different person almost. That's what he means by taking on this persona. So let's see what you guys think. Junior says brag equals show off. Yes, basically. Essentially brag equals show off. <laughs> when internet doesn't work during live meetings, it gets under my skin. Yes. So, it seems like I'm not having too many answers to my question about Jason's point, but let me tell you what I think Jason is trying to say. He's saying at this in this part of the conversation, you hear interviews with these people. So, when you actually hear these people speak in real life, these rap these rappers he's talking about who are writing nasty lyrics, when you hear them speak in real life or when you read something that they've said in an interview, they're not actually like that. They're not this horrible person who they pretend to be in their rap songs. They're different. So he's saying a lot of the time it's like a persona they're putting on, okay? I hope that's clear. I hope that you understand that. Again, let me know if you have any questions. And that is all the time I have for you today. So thank you for watching. Again, you can download the full podcast episode in the description of this video. There is a link. Follow that link. Download the episode. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the episode. And I'll be here for another two minutes to answer any questions if you guys have them. Carol says, I didn't hear your question. I was asking people to summarize Jason's point for me, but I wasn't clear enough about that. But anyways, thank you guys. Oh, let me switch screens. I hope you enjoyed that presentation and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of the week. Leave a comment on my website. Leave a comment in this YouTube video. I'll try my best to get back to you. And take care. Okay, everyone? Bye-bye.